Welcome to Stay Tuned, the stories behind the cars. I'm here today with Tony Sabia, the owner of Little Abner, and we're going to ask Tony a little bit about this amazing classic truck. So, Tony, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, your truck, Little Abner, is a beautiful truck. Tell us a little bit about the background. Okay, so when I was uh, 15, I was traveling to school. I went to a prep school, and I would pass this old beat up 40 Ford uh, on the way to school. I, and uh, I used to beg my dad. We were in construction. Uh, so I always around cars and trucks. I actually worked on some of the construction vehicles. So I was a gearhead very young. The more they would laugh, the harder it would work. <laughs> so in, uh, I guess, 78, something like that, I finally finished the little Abner. It was pretty... I mean, it was, it was reliable. I drove it to three nationals across the country, um, but I always had a, a, a love of the 32 Roadster. So um, all this time I've dated a girl uh, and we ended up getting married. And I, I, I had an opportunity to borrow a 32. My dad talked me out of it. And he said, why don't you build your own? So I eventually bought a, 30, a real 32 Ford steel body and the frame and it's still here we haven't touched it that was a long time ago and my son who's a, also a gearhead uh that's going to be his hot rod so uh anyway um i got married had two kids they were both very involved my son raced go kart for 10 years nationally so that took up all my time and the car sat years and as he my son got older he said dad why don't we start working on the hot rod so we did um and uh, what you see on Instagram, uh, Sands Custom LLC, is is the finished product. So uh, that that's basically how it started. So I've had this truck since I was 15. I'm 68. I'm 68 now. Wow, that's an amazing an amazing history with with your truck. What what are some of the major changes that you've made over the years to restore and 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 make Little Abner what he is today? So anyway, we we redid the whole chassis. We put a tubular center section in it. We put a Mustang two front end air ride. Uh, and that was all from the help from Pro Picks Automotive in a while, Bob. He was a great friend. We still are great friends. Um, the body was chopped and channeled, what we did, which we didn't do. We had somebody do that. Uh, we bought a bone motor because I had to have the blower. Um, like I said, the air ride. And then we connected with Pro Picks. Uh, they make pickup beds up in Canada. And it's a family-owned company. And that relationship has grown over, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, they, they put Little Abner in their show in Tennessee. Uh, we talk all the time. And uh, then the problem was the, uh, the next thing was to wire it because everything is push-button or electric there's no cranks or anything hand even the hood the kind of cover everything is a just push a button so that was those were the those were the major things that we had to do uh, it was all part of the big plan oh well, yeah we added some things as we went along and uh that's how what it ended up to be well, that sounds fantastic uh, as you've been doing all these these things and 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 developing little Abner over the years. What has been one of the biggest challenges that you found? Okay, so when I first built this car, um, it had uh, an old beat up pickup bed which I threw away, and the fenders and the hood were. You know, I mean, I spent hours. I remember in a barn, and my grandfather said that my grandfather's with no heat, sanding the hood and. We ended up buying a, a fiberglass fenders and hood, and we made it a tilt front end. You know, this is back down like back in the seventies. But the problem with the tilt front end is you needed two people to close it. So I didn't want to get rid of that when we did it over. So when we put the blower in, well, now we got to cut a hole in this fiberglass hood, and it, it, it'll just collapse if you don't figure out how you're going to support it. So I had some friends. Um, not to say hot riders, but racing guys that I knew, and they they kind of coached me. We did all the work, and uh, to make that hood open, 
without anybody touching it was the key. And that's what I wanted. So I can just push a button and open and close that hood and nobody, it doesn't scratch anything. It latches on its own. Um, that was the biggest challenge. So um, we we kept tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. And it, it, what the inside of the hood looks like an airplane wing. Uh, if you can understand the, the, the gussets that are in an airplane wing to support it. So that's what's inside the hood. And then we, when we finally got to paint it and finish it, we actually finished the hood just like the outside of the truck. So it's not, it doesn't have undercoating on it or uh, uh, any, I mean, it's smooth. I mean, you literally can wax the inside of the hood. Um, and that's how we made buckets for the, there's many Cooper headlights in it. And we, I made buckets to cover the inside the headlight under the fender. Where you really don't see that that much. If you if you see a car with uh, different headlights and you look under the fender, you see the back of the headlight. On mine, you don't see the back of the headlight. There's a form fiberglass piece that we molded to cover the headlight. So there was a lot of work done on that hood. I mean, just I mean, every six months just to get it full to raise up, <laughs> little by little, and then we kept adding rollers and things like that to. To keep it from scratching the body. Wow, that's a uh, that's an amazing level of detail. I have to say. Well, I mean, those were the challenges to to make that hood work. Um, there was, you know, Pro Picks uh, uh, helped me build a bed, which we actually fabricated and changed to to our uh, our our needs because the ch the truck is chopped and channeled. So when you chop a, a you channel a, a car and you lower the body around the frame. Well, now you got to do the same thing to the pickup bed. So we had to do all that. And uh, they helped me go through the whole process. So there was a lot of things that you learned as you went on. Oh, I got to do this now. And, uh, you know, that those were the challenges, really, to, to make everything fit. But we did everything but actually build the motor. I've had the motor part twice uh, because of some problems and actually paint it. But all the 90% of the body work and fabricate, well, all the fabricating was done by us. Every piece is hand built, frame is all finger bonded. So if you get onto this car, the, the chassis looks like the, the outside. It's polished, clear coated. So there's a lot of details underneath that most people don't really see. It has three inch stainless steel polished exhaust that comes out the running boards. Uh, my son is a sanitary welder. He did a lot of the welding. You know, naturally, I did some too, but the major stuff, as far as the stainless, he, he did all that. Well, that's pretty amazing. What's been the most rewarding part of this journey with Little Abner so far? Well, to, to finally finish it at my age, I'm 68 now. Uh, so it's been done for two years. We're still doing changes and adding things. Uh, we just put a radiator under the the rear bed and piped it from the front to the back with uh this would be a second radiator with stainless steel inch and a half tubing which it runs along the frame it's custom built but you know those are the challenges we're we're facing now to make it a little more uh street friendly and and to have all this come together like i said in my age at my age and to bring it to a show and have people well, naturally, it wins some awards. Uh, we won quite a few. And uh, to have people appreciate it. And when we show it, we show the picture of it, what it looked like when I was 18. And they're going, wow, you've had this car so long. And, and the other major thing is uh, all the friends and the help that we got along the way, just like you, Jeff. I mean, we, we made a lot of people... Uh, that supported us when we had a problem, we had a question or uh, some advice. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Wow, that's 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 great. That you know, there's a, it sounds like there's a whole community that's that's come together around Little Abner, which is fantastic. I keep hearing again and again, it's the we. So this has been a real bonding experience with your son. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, he's. Uh, He's a very talented, uh, very talented boy. Um, he's not a boy. He's, 
<laughs> yeah, my son is a legend. <laughs> and if you were going to give some advice to a a younger dad who was with his son and they're driving down the road and they drive past a old car on the side of the road that his son has got an eye on, what would, what would you tell dad? Uh, I would say, hey, don't make it so complicated. So this car is, uh, I'm a by trade a, a mechanical contractor, so I, I know electricity. In fact, don't make the car so complicated. If you're a real hot rider, I mean, just make it simple. You know, I have 22 relays in this car to run it. It even has a push button start. I've been out to the salt flats this past summer, and there's some really cool old school hot rods out there. And they're just plain, they're chopped, and they got flat headeds in them. But they're, to me, that's the ultimate hot rod. You know, plain, simple, be able to cruise around, don't have to worry about all these fancy, these fancy, uh, you know, things anymore like air ride and power windows and uh actuators and uh cooling fans and you know it's you know it's it's just insane when you get all done with it and you say oh my god this is a it's a nightmare now i was lucky enough that i know a little bit about electrical and uh and it came out fairly neat i labeled the car was actually built uh Completely, I mean completely, every wire, everything. And we drove it around for a summer just having fun. And uh, then we took it all apart, piece by piece, every wire, everything completely apart and painted every part separately and then reassembled it. So it took a lot of time and the money's the money's a, a problem too. So make your car something fun something simple i'm not saying i'm not a fan of rat rods but they're they're out there that's what that's my advice would be all right well that sounds pretty good i mean if i were to summarize it sounds like the idea is don't get lost in the build yeah yeah because number one is it it takes a long time to do what we did um and a lot of money in the end i'm 68 i'm just having fun with it now I think it was more fun back when I was 18, when it was a kind of a simple car and uh, we just got in it and rode around the town. But, but I was, I was one of those guys that real, real hot rodder. I mean, real gearhead. And the little Adler comes from when I was a kid, uh, I started working on the construction vehicles and I went in with big work boots and the old time mechanic said, well, you look like little Adler with those boots on. And the name stuck with me. So that's why the truck's called Little Adler. A lot of young people probably don't remember Little Adler, the TV show and uh, the cartoons. Well, that's great. And it's and it's a name that people remember. Uh, some remember it because they remember the cartoons and others just because it's a, it's a neat name. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct. And, it, you know, it's it's uh, it's introduced me to so many people. Uh, so many friends, they're great for advice and uh, and to share things with. And that's really what hot riding is about. It's old school fun, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That really is what hot riding is about. Where are you going to take Lil Abner this year? My wife's saying she wants to go back to Louisville to the NSRA Nationals. I don't know if we'll do the York East, the Nationals East this year. We, we're probably going to go back to Tennessee to the Super Nationals. It's in Pigeon Forge. That's a really nice area. Uh, and that's where we're at right now. Those shows are all late in the summer, so I won't go to work. I'll play with a hot rod. Well, Tony, that's a great story of your life with Little Abner. And thanks very much for joining us on Stay Tuned, the stories behind the cars. Join us again for our next episode of Stay Tuned. Brought to you by Tuner Cartoons.